Paris. Shipwrecked? Oh. <laughs> I am shipwrecked this morning with my two feet family firmly planted on the ground. It's the best way to be shipwrecked, by the way. You can too, though. All you have to do is come to the headquarters of NOAA in Silver Spring, where we are live this morning and where we are getting the first sneak peek at a brand new exhibit that has everything to do with when things go wrong at sea. However, they also work here to make sure things don't go wrong. We're going to explore both of those sides coming up live next on Fox 5 Morning News. Stay with us. This morning, the adventures of Holly Morris uh, <laughs> takes her underwater and us as well. Yeah, so while she is exploring the new shipwrecked exhibit at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration in Silver Spring, Maryland, Holly, good morning. Good morning. If I'm going to be shipwrecked, then I want to be shipwrecked with someone from NOAA because they yeah. know what they're doing when it comes to exploring and discovering shipwrecks. But of course, their main goal would be to prevent shipwrecks in the first place. So that's part of this exhibit as well. And we've got a lot to share, so we want to go ahead and get started. And appropriately, we're starting with Joseph Sinkowitz. Joe, that's your real name. That's my real name. <laughs> Joe Sinkowitz talking about a shipwreck exhibit. Actually, Joe is a NOAA Ocean Prediction Center meteorologist. And my understanding was you actually helped predict the perfect storm. Yes, I was one of the forecasters on the team that helped predict uh, the Halloween storm or the perfect storm. That's amazing. So talk a little bit about what you do, how NOAA goes about predicting, um, you know, maritime weather. We, we, um, it's a team effort uh, at the Prediction Center, the Ocean Prediction Center. We, we use observations that are gathered through different NOAA means, through satellite, through uh, um, buoys. Uh, we put all that information together uh, through computer models, and through the computer models and through the forecaster knowledge, we're able to predict what's going to happen and to predict basically warn you to keep you safe. Well, you can predict all you want, but if people don't listen, then that's the problem, right? So you want people to check the weather before they go out and then continually check the weather as they are out. And tell me a little bit about the stuff you have here. Okay, we have a, a bunch of ways that, are, that we transmit weather information. And one of them is NOAA Weather Radio, which is right here. What's becoming more and more popular is, is the Internet, both oh. on land and at sea. They're able to receive uh, weather information through cell phone technology or through satellite technology. Single sideband radio, for if you're going to go uh, out on the high seas, uh, is another way with a computer to download information. And to a Navtex receiver, if you're going to work in the offshore waters, and then a weather facts receiver, which for graphical products that uh, the Ocean Prediction Center produces. Well, thank you for giving us a little insight here, and thanks for the work you do. Appreciate that. Now, if he predicts something and you find yourself in trouble, you need to know what to do, and NOAA helps there, too. I have Lieutenant Commander John Caskey here. He is a NOAA Marine in Aviation Operations. That's who you're with, right? Correct. And this is Lieutenant Jeff Shoup, who is with the NOAA SARSAP program. So tell me a little bit about what you guys do. Well, I work with uh, search and rescue satellite aided tracking, and this here is an EPIRB, an emergency beacon uh, used uh, to signal up to our weather satellites up above uh, an emergency, uh, a ship in distress or an aircraft that has crashed. They operate on two different frequencies, 121.5 or 406, and it's kind of uh, important uh, tomorrow, one year from tomorrow, we'll be turning off the 121.5 system. So any pilot or boater out there using one of these old beacons uh, will want to make sure they upgrade to the new 406, uh, much like this one here. Okay, and now you're going to tell me what I need to do as far as a drill. Explain what's going to go on here. Correct. Well, I mean, NOAA's always supported uh, safe marine navigation, and some of the products that uh, NOAA puts out there to help keep boaters safe uh, include nautical charts, mm -hmm. uh, marine weather forecasts, as well as uh, ocean observations through the, some of our NOAA buoys here. Okay, I have a minute to go, so that's about okay. time for my drill. I'm handing over my microphone. I never do that, so I must really trust you. <laughs> We're good. So you get it. Okay, okay, so you tell me. In the un unlikely event that the ship is going down, we'll go ahead and we'll get our, deploy our life rafts. We'll also get uh, all the, the crew and officers into their immersion suits. Holly's got her shoes off. She's going to sit down on the deck. Start putting her feet in. You're going to time me, right? I'm timing you. You've got oh. one minute. Ready? Go. Go. So she's got her legs going in. She's going to put her weak up, arm in up. next. Both going down. She just does them both at the same time. That's okay. Get the hood on. Hood on. Hood on. Hardest part. Looking good. And zip, zip yourself up. Arch your back. Arch your back and pull up. Arch your back and pull up. There you go. Jump in the life raft. 
We'll pass the EPIRB to you, and Set you're good to go. Rescue's on the way. <laughs> and my time? 61 seconds. Oh, that's so good, though, that's for pretty the first good for time. my first time. I don't think that usual people have all the accessories on that I did. Anyway, listen, you can come out and experience this as well. I'm sure this is a great look right now. Uh, MyFoxDC.com is our website. We have a link to Noah's website. The exhibit runs from February 2nd through the 10th. It's absolutely free. We're going to continue to explore and discover shipwrecks in our next hour. Back to you. That oh, Holly. Cool. That, nice is, that is cool stuff. That's neat. First time, that's great. <laughs> Thanks, Holly. And still, the Shipwreck Museum and Dr. Sinkowitz. That's just amazing. <laughs> Holly. Allison, I hope you are ready to do a little exploring this morning because you are looking at actual shipwrecks thanks to a command center, an exploration command center. This is just one of five that NOAA has. We are at the one at their headquarters in Silver Spring. And coming up, we are going to show you how new technology is allowing science to explore underwater, scientists, I should say, to explore underwater without ever leaving the land. It's all part of a new shipwreck exhibit that opens tomorrow as well. We're giving you a sneak peek first, though, this morning, live next on Fox 5 Morning News. Stay with us. Uh, starting tomorrow, you can explore a shipwreck without ever leaving dry land. Fox Eyes Holly Morris joins us now again live from the uh, from NOAA in Silver Spring. Holly, what's up? This is so fascinating. We have so much to show you, not enough time to do it in. So hopefully, we're just going to pique your interest so that you will come out here and see this exhibit yourself. It has everything to do with shipwrecks, and we're going to start with Jeff Johnson, who is an historian with the USS Monitor, one of the many shipwrecks that NOAA protects. So tell uh, you're the first. So tell me a little bit about the USS Monitor and what you have here for people to well, see. The Monitor was a Civil War era ironclad that changed everything about the revolutionized naval warfare with essentially the rotating gun turret, which we have a, a facade of back here. Uh, what we've been able to learn a lot about the Monitor over the years through the archaeology done on the site, we've been able to recover artifacts, match them up with some of the historic records that have survived, and in a lot of cases we've been able to fill in the gaps where historic records missing. And we've brought a variety of artifacts over here, some reproductions, some originals, that show uh, more and more about what life was like on board of an 1860 Warship. Because really when I was reading some of the things here, I think one of the best sentences I saw was that shipwrecks are really time capsules. Completely. Uh, the Monitor is an 1862 time capsule. She sank on New Year's Eve, 1862. And it is. It is it's just it's a contained moment of history because basically the bulwark, the bulkheads, they keep all that intact until nature takes its course and stuff gets destroyed. So through archaeology, you're able to go out and learn about a moment in time where history just stopped. Jeff, thank you so much. Come and see Jeff. He's got a lot of stories to share, and you'll enjoy your time with him. Of course, Noah explores, it discovers shipwrecks, and it has to do that with the help of technology, and that's where David Alberg comes in. He's the superintendent for Noah's uh, monitor of the National Marine Sanctuary, so basically you manage that uh, shipwreck, yes, right? So tell me a little bit about the technology that enables Noah to do what it needs to do. Absolutely. Well, I think a lot of people know NOAA through the Weather Service, and I think this exhibit will help people understand that one of the big things that we work on is to protect and identify shipwrecks. And we use a lot of technology to do that. So I'll come over here and show you some of the pieces. This, for instance, is a side-scan sonar. We call it a towfish. It's a device that uses sound waves to pick up images on the bottom of the ocean. Over here is a tow sled that, that divers will use to take individual pictures of shipwrecks, and then they sew them together, and if you look here, what it creates is a photo mosaic, and it's a way to image an enormous shipwreck with little teeny pieces. Um, over here is a magnetometer, which is another tool that we use, which is towed behind a, uh, another ship, and it's used to find large pieces of metal like shipwrecks. And I know we wanted to get in more than what we're going to be able to get in, but I want to make sure we get the kids in over here because this really is a hands-on way for, for people to understand uh, the robotics that are submersed and go down and, and do the exploring. Absolutely. And what the kids are going to do here is uh, play with a, a mock ROV, which is a tool that we use to get our eyes down below the water where divers can't go. And they can see just how hard or easy, <laughs> I think it's the first, it is to navigate that thing from the surface, right? Exactly. We oh. Go ahead. I was going to say, we use ROVs. They were used on Titanic. We use them on Monitor and on shipwrecks all the time. It's a way to get cameras down. We're in small spaces and in places using high technology to, to better understand the processes that ships uh, go through when, they're, when they need to be protected. And last but not least, I'm going to take you into the command center because with the help of robotics such as that, they could beam pictures back. And it used to be that scientists had to be on board the ship to see those pictures. No longer. Ocean exploration is changing, and that's where Fred Gorell comes in. He is the public affairs officer for NOAA's Office of Ocean Exploration and Research. And if you can take us through in 30 seconds, Fred, that would be great. 
I'm going to talk fast and try. This is Okeanos Explorer. It's NOAA's new ship for exploring the ocean. It'll be America's ship for exploring the ocean, the only one of its kind. And it's involved with telepresence technology, a new way of exploring the ocean. And this ship will be mapping the unknown, unknown ocean when it makes a discovery, such as down on the seafloor here, down at the bottom where these underwater robots are, or in the water column above. It'll send information, including live images, up to satellites, and they'll come down ashore through high-speed Internet connections to places like this right next to us. Let's go in here because we're out of time, and I just want you to show, because this is where you come in, and this, really, we've spent so much time in here this morning when we haven't been with you all. These are actual shipwrecks off the coast of Hawaii, and the stories are fascinating. Come hear them yourself firsthand from Fred. MyFoxDC.com is our website. We have a link to Noah's. This exhibit only runs from February 2nd through the 10th. It's absolutely free. Do not miss it you won't be disappointed when you come out and take the time to see it and allow a little time guys back to you all right holly thank you so much